For the following exercises, evaluate the algebraic expressions. So for the first one, if f of x equals x plus 1 all divided by 2 minus x, we need to evaluate for f of 5i. Okay, so if you're not on the playlist, we have a complex number playlist. Go check that out because there are, I think, a couple of questions that we did before this that's like a general overview of the imaginary concept. Um, this one, we're just going to jump right in. So remember, guys, that an i value is just standing for all imaginary numbers. So they're basically numbers that are not real. So real numbers are actual numbers. 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4. i is denoted for numbers that basically don't exist, that are not real. But the math is exactly the same. Adding, subtracting, distributing, multiplying, dividing, everything is exactly the same. So let's solve for the first one. They gave us a nice function f of x equals x plus 1 all over 2 minus x. Now remember guys, all we have to do in this case, we have to substitute all of the x values for what they tell us. And in this case, they want us to substitute all the x values for 5 i's. Well, here's an x value and here's an x value. So instead of writing it as x, I'm just going to pop in a 5i right there. So here we go. This would equal not x anymore, but 5i plus 1 all over 2 minus, not x anymore, but 5i. Now chances are a lot of students would just box this answer off and say, hey, look, I solved. I can't really do much more. But... There is a thing that we have to do here. The key with imaginary numbers is that imaginary numbers can never, ever be in the denominator. And because I have an I on the bottom in the denominator, I have to get rid of it. How do we do that? Well, you will always multiply by a fraction and it's always the opposite of what is being done here. If we do the opposite, we will be sure to get rid of that i value in the denominator. So if this is saying 2 minus 5i, I'm going to multiply my other denominator by 2 plus 5i. But now... The rule of thumb is that we got to be fair. If I multiply this bottom by 2 plus 5i, I have to multiply the top plus 2, uh, 2 plus 5i. I have to be fair. So it's literally just the same. And this is the only reason that we can multiply by something that wasn't in the function. Some students say, well, how the heck did this come about, right? How am I even allowed to do this? Well, what is this divided by itself, or any number divided by itself? It's just 1. So this technically cancels out. But the math is what's going to lead us to get rid of this i value. Let's go now. So what do we have in the denominator? Oh, I have, I have one thing multiplied by another thing. So technically, we can, you, we can simplify this by saying f of 5i equals, let's just do the denominator first, 2 minus 5i times 2 plus 5i. And then what would be for the top? It would be this whole thing times this whole thing. So the top would be 5i plus 1 times 2 plus 5i. Okay, now it doesn't matter who's getting done on the top or the bottom first. I don't care if I do the numerator first or the denominator first. It doesn't matter. This is, this is really ugly. I, I must clean it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not even better. Okay, let's do the denominator first because I want to show you guys how does this even get rid of the i's in the denominator. Okay, so 
2 minus 5i times 2 plus 5i. This is distributing and playing fair. This value, 2, needs to be multiplied by the first value in the second term, but you got to play fair. If you multiply it by the first one, the second one also has to be multiplied. And then you have to do the same thing with the next number. The negative 5i wants to be multiplied by the 2. However, it also needs to be multiplied by the 5i. you got to play fair. So let's get down to it. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times a 5i is plus 10i. Negative 5i times 2 is a negative 10i. I don't know if I said 5i for this, but 10i, 10i. And then negative 5i times a positive 5i is a negative 25i squared. Now, we just got to clean up the terms. 10i minus 10i is gone. They get rid of each other. So now I'm left with 4 minus 25i squared. But now you might say, how? we still have an i here, right? But here is the thing. Anytime you have an i times another i, which is the same thing as i squared, this always equals negative 1. That's how we can get rid of the i here. This i squared is a negative 1. Negative 25 times a negative 1 is a 25. So if I just, so maybe I'll keep this negative 1. And then we have 4 minus 25 times negative 1. So it would be 4 plus 25. This now equals 25 plus 4 is 29. So now I know that this whole bottom thing is 29. So I'm going to get rid of this whole thing and just put a 29 here. Do you see how now by multiplying these two things, we get a 29 and, you know, the i goes away? So if I did it for the bottom, what do you think I have to do to the top? I have to do the same thing. So let's go for it. I'm going to erase this. And let's do it again. We got to play fair. I have a 5i plus 1 times 2 plus 5i. The 5i has to be multiplied by the 2, but it has to also be multiplied by the 5i. And then the same thing. The 1 has to be multiplied by the 2, but then it's also got to be multiplied by the 5i. So let's start with the first term. 5i times 2 is 10i. 5i times 5i is plus 25i squared. And then let's do this in red. 1 times 2 is plus 2. 1 times 5i is plus 5i. Let's clean this guy up. So actually, let me bring this up a little bit, just so I have room on the bottom. I have a 10i plus a 5i. So I have a 15i. I also have a 25i squared and a 2. Remember, an i squared is a negative 1. So this would technically be plus 25 times a negative 1 plus 2. 25 times a negative 1 is negative 25. Negative 25 plus 2 is a negative 23. So I'm just going to rearrange this. This whole thing would equal negative 23. So instead, this would equal whoop, negative 23. And remember, real numbers have to come first and then imaginary numbers. So this would have to be rewritten as negative 23 plus 15i. And this whole thing now goes for the top. Whee! 
negative 23 plus 15i. And now I just look, you know, can I simplify this? I got a 23, a 29. No, those are prime numbers. So this would be the answer to the first one. Wahoo. Okay, let's do the same type of concept to the second one. If five, if five, if f of x equals one plus two x over x plus three, we need to evaluate f of four i. So same thing's going on. We have this for right now, one plus two x over x plus three. I need to substitute anytime I see an x, I got to put a four i in here. So where are the x's? There was one here. And there's one here. They go bye-bye, and now we just put a 4i in there. So this would be equal to 1 plus 4, oh, actually 1 plus 2 times 4i all over 4i plus 3, right? Oh boy, here we go again. I have an i in the denominator. So I must multiply by the opposite to get that out. So instead of multiplying by 4i plus 3, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 4i minus 3. But remember, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top because technically I can't just add things out of thin air. This would equal 1, but we can do the math to get rid of the i's. So let's work with the bottom first. We have 4i plus 3 all multiplied by 4i plus 3. We have to be fair. We have to take the first term, 4i, times it by 4i, but then we have to times it by 3. And then we move to the second term. 3 wants to be multiplied by the 4i, but then also 3 wants to be multiplied by the 3. So let's go for it. 4 times 4i is 16. Actually, let me color code this. Yeah, this is black. Black arrow, so I'll put it in black. So this is 16i squared. 4i times 3 is a plus 12i. Oh, and sorry about that. Hold on. This should have been minus 3. Yes, that's what the denominator is. Good catch, guys. Let me know if you caught that. Um, so yeah, so this would be a negative 12 because 4i times a negative 3 is a negative 12. 3 times a 4i is a positive 12i, so plus 12i. And then 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9. Let's clean this up. Negative 12i plus 12i, those go bye-bye. So that's how we get rid of the i's there. And remember i squared is a negative 1. So this would be 16 times a negative 1 minus 9. This would equal negative 16 minus 9. Negative 16 minus 9 is what, 25? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yep, I still do math sometimes on my hands. So that's the bottom. So the bottom would equal a negative 25. Now we just have to work with the top. So let me erase this, because this was all the bottom. And now let's do the numerator, all the math that has to deal with the top. Now the first thing that I see is that this part isn't really simplified yet. I have a 2 times a 4i. So what is 2 times 4i? 2 times 4i is just 8i. So I'm going to just replace it like that. Now I'm ready to multiply the two tops. So the two top guys are 1 plus 8i times 4i minus 3. And we got to be fair. We have to multiply the 1 by the 4i. Then we got to multiply the 1 by the negative 3. Then we go to the second term. The 8i has to be multiplied by the 4i. And then you got to be fair. It's got to be multiplied by the negative 3. So 1 times 4i is just 4i. 
1 times a negative 3 is just a negative 3. Now we move to the second term. 8i times 4i, 8 times 4 is 32, i times i is i squared. 8i times a negative 3 is a negative 24i. Let's clean this up. Um, I see that I have a 4i here and a negative 24i here. So this would turn into a negative 20. So negative 3 plus 32i squared minus 20i. And now I see that nasty i squared. We know that i squared is just a negative 1 times by 32, right? So this whole thing, 32 times a negative 1, is a negative 32. So I can just plug that in for here. So this whole thing would be negative 32. And then negative 3 minus 32, that would be a negative 35 minus 20i. Can't simplify that anymore, right? And 32 minus 3, yep, that's 35, minus 20i. And that all goes on the top. So negative 35 minus 20i. Um, this, you can basically cap off. This would be your answer. Now here, if we actually wanted to simplify it a little bit more, mainly because there's a 35, there's a 20, there's a 5, right? They're all divisible by 5. So you could even reduce all three of these numbers by 5. So I can say that f of 4i would be equal to 5 times 7 is a 35. So this would now turn into a negative 7, right? 5 times a 4 would be a 20. So this would be minus 4. I, and then 5 times 5 is negative, well, 25, so this would be a negative 5. The signs stay exactly the same, you're just pulling out um, just, you know, the number 5. And this would be your answer, or at least one of them. There's so many that are equivalent. So this could be acceptable, this is acceptable, it just depends on what your teacher or professor specifically wants in terms of simplifying. Um, okay, guys, what'd you think? This was fun. Just remember, with these, you just have to be fair. So when you multiply by those two parentheses, just make sure that you multiply everybody, okay? Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. Give this video a like, and if you wanna help us out, press the subscribe button or smash the subscribe button or whatever the, you know, whatever you guys do with the subscribe button. Um, you guys rock. Have an awesome day and let's keep studying hard. Okay. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.